If you want to learn more Juno security topics, be sure to check out our Juno security course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash course slash JSEC. It's three days of all things Juno security. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello and welcome to the Telnet and Secure Shell Brute Force Login Attack Prevention Learning Bite. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After successfully completing this learning byte, you will be able to block Telnet and Secure Shell brute force login attacks on SRX devices. Let's start by analyzing what the problem is in this situation. It starts with malicious users connecting to an SRX platform using Secure Shell or Telnet, and these malicious users don't have valid accounts on the platform. I would like to guess a valid user's username and password to gain administrative access to a device and take control of it. And of course my goal as an administrator of this platform is to prevent that from happening. And I can do that by changing the way the login process works on an SRS device. I can slow the login process down so a malicious user is not prompted as frequently for a username and password. I can lock an account out after a certain number of failed login attempts. I also have the ability to forcibly disconnect that malicious user and end their Telnet or Secure Shell session. Now in the example I'm going to show you here in a few seconds, we're going to connect as a malicious user and use an account that I created on the local SRX device called Fred. And we're going to log in incorrectly and provide an incorrect password for Fred and we're going to see how these configuration options on an SRX can help us prevent a brute force login attack. Preventing brute force login attacks is enabled in configuration mode under the edit system login branch of the configuration hierarchy. An available option called retry options allows us to specify a backup threshold. So the backup threshold will define how many times can a user log in incorrectly before I begin to introduce a delay to the login process. This backup threshold can vary from a value of one incorrect login attempt up to three incorrect login attempts before I introduce a delay in presenting the user another opportunity to provide a username and password. This delay is defined by a value called the back off factor and this is defined in seconds and the range is from five seconds to ten seconds. So the backup threshold and backup factor work together. So let's have a scenario where we set the backup threshold to two. So after two incorrect login attempts, I want to introduce a delay before this rogue user is presented a username and password prompt again. So if I set the back off factor to five seconds, after two incorrect login attempts, there will be a five second delay before a login prompt is presented to this malicious user again. I can also specify with the tries before disconnect value how many times you can log in or attempt to log in unsuccessfully before I terminate the Telnet or the Secure Shell session of this malicious user. They'll have to Telnet and Secure Shell back in again and start the process over. I also can specify a lockout period. So after a certain number of failed login attempts on a particular user account, I can actually lock out the account and that would prevent future logins for a certain period of time. And if an account is locked out in operational mode, there's a command available, show system login lockout, that can show me any locked out accounts and what the duration of that lockout would be. I'm going to connect to an SRX 240 device and let's put some of this theory into practice and kind of see how it works. 
So this is an SRX 240 device, and, and to save time, I've already kind of gone in and, and done the dirt work here and, and built the configuration. Now remember, in configuration mode, we're under the Edit System Login branch, and here is the Retry Options that we mentioned previously. And, and I've set a, a couple of values here already. I've set the back off threshold to two, so after two incorrect login attempts, I'm going to specify a delay of five seconds before a user is prompted again to provide a username and, and, and password. Now this back off factor uh, works in a unique way. After two failed login attempts, I will wait five seconds before I prompt the user to log in again. After the third time, I'll wait 10 seconds. After the fourth incorrect login, I wait 15 seconds. And then we're going to reach the tries before disconnect value of, hey, if you log in incorrectly five times in a row, look, I'm just going to disconnect your telnet or your secure shell session. This is not something I'm normally expecting. And I'm also going to lock out your account. And I'm going to lock you out. And this lockout period is specified in minutes. And so I'm going to lock your account out for five minutes. And here's the user account I built under Edit System Login. I created a, a user, a local user called Fred, made him a super user, and specified a password. Now, what I'm going to do, however, is, is tell it into this SRX and log in as Fred, and I'm going to provide an incorrect password. I'm going to see how these retry options affect the login process and prevent a brute force style attack. I'm going to telnet to the same SRX and it's going to prompt me to log in and provide a username and password. So I'm going to put in an incorrect password, something I know is completely incorrect. That's one time. Fred, here's a username and password. That's two times. Now remember, now my back off factor is coming into play. And it's going to wait. My back off factor was five, so there's a five second delay before I'm prompted to provide a username and password again. So let's let's keep going. Fred, provide an incorrect password. Now the back off factor is going to be doubled, and it will wait ten seconds before I'm prompted. Now again, we're trying to slow a dictionary style username and password attack down. Let's do it again. Now the back off factor kicks in and it will be 15 seconds before I am prompted to provide another username and password. I'm hoping this malicious user will get frustrated and maybe move on to somebody else's platform and quit trying to attack mine. Let's do it again. Fred, incorrect username and password, or incorrect password, excuse me. And now I've tried it, if I'm not mistaken, I've tried it a few times and at some point it should come up in I've crossed the threshold of five, so it's going to automatically disconnect my Telnet session. I'm going to connect back in over to my console connection that I have into this same device. And remember, there's an operational mode command that we can run called Show System Login Lockout. And I can see that Fred's account has been locked out, and it's going to be locked out in this case for five minutes. And so for that five minute duration, this account is not allowed to log in to the platform. So this is a way that we can uh, slow down and try to prevent a brute force style login attack on an SRX platform. In this learning byte, we blocked Telnet and Secure Shell brute force login attacks on SRX devices. For more information about Juniper Network's training and certification options, please visit our website. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media. Join the discussion.